You know, this racism in this country is, is, is uh, it's in the foundation of the, the buildings that this uh, country says it's built upon. Mm. All these colonial buildings, um, it's in the foundation of this country. You know, and, and we're constantly trying to tell America that they need to wake up, wake up. You know, America is, is, uh, represents uh, oppression throughout the world, but they don't recognize that they're part of the problem. Uh, and racism has uh, manifested itself in many different ways, and now it's in the sports, the whole sports industry. You know, and you know, they just don't get it. Why is it that somehow in this country's history and the way that they they uh, took took our lands, colonized, exterminated the Indians, this mindset, like if we were expendable, you know, that's into the racism of this country and its founding to the point to where they feel they can get away to using, you know, Indian mascots, the Redskins, you know. What does that really mean? All right, so, fellas, the other thing I want to definitely ask you both about, uh, you've talked a lot about it, written a lot about it over the years, been following this for years. The, the, the more recent poll put out by the Washington Post saying that 9 out of 10 Native Americans, I want to get the language right, do not think that the name Redskins is offensive. And I'm, I want to get it right because there was some, some pushback saying, and even in their own research saying this wasn't that they were saying that the name is okay, they were just saying that they didn't find the word itself racist. Kevin, I'll start with you again. What is your response to this controversy as we sit, I guess, just outside Washington, D.C.? What is your response, having, having covered this for a long time, watched this issue for a long time? You know, it's, it's really not about polls, and, and, and I don't really like the polls. No matter who does them and what the result is, it still does not. It still does not defeat what the American Psychological Association found in their studies of the impact on Native youth. Um, it doesn't change research not cited in this poll not cited right, just by the way in that poll. Right. <laughs> um, it doesn't defeat what we've learned about the etymology of the word um, the, the way it's been wielded uh, against native folk in this country um, it doesn't defeat what people like Susan Harjo have been saying year after year after year. Um, Officially, I think, since 92 she started? Well, n you can actually go back to 72. Oh, wow. She, I, I believe when she first moved to D.C. Okay. from Oklahoma, okay. where she grew up a huge football fan and went to her first uh, NFL game in the city and looked around and wondered whether or not she was going to get out. Right. <laughs> Am I next on the spit? Right. Um, so, you know, the, the, it, it almost seems as if even though, I, you know, and I work for the Post under contract, and I know the peop some of the people who work in their polling department, and it's an outstanding polling department. Um, but this doesn't, in, in fact, not only this doesn't defeat it for me, um, you know, and I'm trying to make this documentary about about this entire struggle, um, but it really energizes me because the way you stated exactly what the question was speaks really to education, right? It doesn't speak to something else. Yeah. It, where do you even begin with this horseshit poll? They talked to 500 people in 50 states who, over the phone said, yeah, I'm Native American. And they said, oh, does the word redskin offend you? No, it doesn't offend me. Great. Moving on to the next question. 
Now, when I'm asked, what do you think about the poll, about the name, I've been asked this in some interviews. My response is, which poll are you talking about? Oh, are you talking about the one from Cal State San Bernardino that shows that 67% when asked the question, and think about how it's a different question, do you think this name is racist or offensive? How 67%, not does it bother you, are you offended by this name? No, 67 do you think it's racist? Do you think it's 67% said, of course it's racist. It's a racial slur. 67%. And actually, I'm very sympathetic to the argument that the numbers really don't matter, that racism is like pregnancy. There's no such thing as being a little bit racist. You're either pregnant or you're not. It's either racist or it's not. And if it is, the percentages really should not matter. But I'm deeply bothered with how the polling folks did this. I've interviewed Scott Clement, who heads the polling department. He's a very intelligent, very thorough, very serious person. But that doesn't mean he's also infallible. And they made a big mistake here. They made a big mistake because they don't understand the issue of verification. They don't understand that to be Native American in this country is in and of itself a political act. It's not an ethnicity. It's not an ethnicity. It's not, even, it's not a race. It's not the sort of thing that you either just sort of are. It's the sort of thing that you have to fight to be. You know, and that there we get to issues of tribal law. That's where you get to issues of enrollment. And those are the folks who should be asked. And so is the name offensive? Let's go down the long list of tribal councils that have called on the team to change the name. The list is as long as our bodies. And so then you have to ask the question, either these tribal councils are profoundly out of touch with the people they talk to. And live with. And live with. <laughs> Um, or that there's something wrong with this poll. And I'll tell you just another thing. that Why is it that when this poll came out, immediately you had number one trending on Twitter all over the place, hashtag I'm Native, I was not asked, of people saying this is totally offensive, what are you talking about? And you could not find, I was trying to find it, one Native American person who was like, thank God goodness this poll came out I'm 90% and I'm not I feel like I'm silenced by the tribal councils I'm never heard thank goodness that's not what you get instead what I got was 24 straight hours of interns at places like the Daily Caller and Roll and and like the you know Breitbart and these these right-wing sites because because I'll just say real quick it's like one of the enduring we can call it victories I would certainly call it victories of the civil rights movement was that racism was no longer polite and, and able to be said. I've certainly heard arguments from people that doing that just pushes it underground and maybe that's more poisonous. I, I, I get that. But it's one of the victories of the civil rights movement, like the Lee Atwater thing, which Trump is, is rolling back. Like this idea that now if we're going to be racist, we have to speak in code because the civil rights movement defeated the idea of being openly racist. But this was the exception. And so it's the last place for, for largely white people to be able to just be racist and proud. And so when you challenge that, you're challenging something very sacred to them. That was definitely one of the things I wanted to quickly cover is, the, is, is, is what we were talking a little bit off, off camera about, the, the, the reaction of the sports talk radio media that I'm most familiar with, at least in this area. I'll, I'll leave it to that. Where it was all white men praising this poll as if, as if a burden had been lifted off of their shoulders and now we could move on, all the critics would be shut up. Before you respond, I, you know, to talk about that, if you, if you could weave into your responses just a little bit of the, the history for those who are watching this who don't know this team, who don't know the history of this name. Right. Why is it, I'll, let me, so I'll start this way. Why in particular is it, is it difficult, if not fully incorrect, to say that this name is not a mount uh, it's not about disparaging anyone, but it's about praising a group of people, which is usually the team's first line of defense. Um, and then respond to a little bit about how media covered this in this city, uh, if you would, or my critique at right. least of, of what. Well, first of all, media didn't cover this as an issue in this city until, according to my research, 1988, when um, a conversation between... Um, uh, the columnist of the Washington Post, uh, Cohen, um, and uh, another Native person, um, out, laid out for him the etymology of the word and their problem with the word. And he wrote a column at that time saying, 
this is outrageous. We need to change this name. This is about whites collecting scalps of indigenous exactly. people, people. For, for money. Right. This is not about the, the stereotype right. of right. You can read 19th century advertisements for redskins, which are scalps. Priced by right. age and gender exactly. and yeah. Which, by the way, at another level, right, is really about the eradication of the people of this country. So it's not just about, it's just not about a classified ad. Um, a genocide. But we'll come back and ask 500 of you, right. allegedly. If you're, if you're, <laughs> right. So, and then if you go back and you understand the history of the team, um, the last team in the NFL to integrate, which did so only under threat of bayonet from the federal government because they were playing in a, in a new stadium, or they were to play in a new stadium that was um, funded by federal money, um, a team that was imported here from the city of Boston, by um, an avowed racist and George Preston Marshall, um, you begun to get a whole other understanding of, of this team. And then, not only that, but the fact that uh, over the years, um, not only had he drenched the team in this, in this ugly history of America in terms of its relationship to Native people, um, as well as with the Confederacy um, because he wanted to hold on to the market of the southern states that, that, that he held, um, uh, but also creating this, uh, uh, creating this fiction about the team honoring a man who was part of the team as being native, who, in fact, is not native at all. He's as phony as the cheerleaders that you had. Probably a lot of people who took the, the poll, pick up the phone and answer the poll. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, so this entire thing is based on a fiction. Yeah, I mean, that, that Kevin just broke it down big time. I mean, it, it's the, the stubborn defense of this name by the diehards has taken a very, very ugly turn in recent years. Because I, I moved to this town like around 20 years ago, uh, a little less than that. And back at that time, it's like it was just one of those things where, where even, even I was just sort of like, damn, that name's kind of messed up. But hey, go team, you know, and I was into him. You know, I loved Daryl Green. I loved moving to this town. Even growing up in NYC, it's like I was into John Riggins and I was just and the Smurfs. I mean, I mean, how could you not love this team? It was so, a good time to be a sports fan well, around here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was just like I was just sort of like, you know, so as far as the name went, it was more just kind of like, damn, that's uncomfortable. But, you know, no one's really saying anything about it as far as I see. And of course, one of the things the movement has done is that it's reminded me of that that quote by um we could call it, let's say, Boots Riley saying uh, you can't say shit uh, when you're riding the fence. Or R and Dottie Roy who said, you know, once you see things and you can't unsee them, uh, there's no more innocence. You know, it's like and so it's like everybody has seen this now. And so now I've seen things that I never saw before that are really upsetting. Like my wife's family um, goes to Ocean City, Maryland, which tends to be like working class, white beach community. And you see shirts that have the confederate flag and the redskins logo intertwined wow. and so it's, it's like it, it and, and when you or when you saw um gillespie when he was running for governor in virginia turn it into a wedge issue against terry mcauliffe i mean and so it's this idea of it becoming just yet another thing in the tired red state blue state culture war and oh are you for political correctness or you're not and trump and all this stuff Instead of just taking a step back and being like, well, wait a minute, is it a racial slur or isn't it? It is. Should a team have it or not? Do we think it should? But you want to know the deal breaker question is I tried to ask this of Roger Goodell. He wouldn't answer it. He walked away. I said, if you started a new expansion team tomorrow, would you consider calling it Indians? And he just walked away. Not in a million years would an expansion team have a Native American name on it now. The other question I have is what percentage of the so-called indigenous population would it take to say, okay, we're, we're going to change the name? In other words, right. if it was nine out of ten that said we don't like the name, does that mean that they would have changed it that, or immediately after this poll? Is, it, is the 67% number that you're citing, is, if, right. if, they, if they took right. that number seriously, is that 
high enough, not high enough? Like, they what would are they be blasting the pole the same way we're? Well, that's what I, like I mean. That's what I'm wondering. Right. And, and that's and that's why I don't like. That's why I don't like polls. Uh, because even the United Nation did a poll, remember? Yeah. They did one, and uh, they couched the question just right, and they got a very defining response. I mean, that was part of the critique that I had was that, right. I mean, you, 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 you I mean, not United only a long time journalist, well. Because part of the, one of their questions yeah. was like, and this is like, is called like in polling, it's like you're kind of leading the yeah. person. Yeah. Right. They're like, would you be comfortable calling a Native American a redskin? <laughs> right, exactly. But, but, so that was the, the, the question of methodology was what I was, you know, and as you, you, you not only are a, a, a journalism practitioner, but you, you know, teach right. it as, as well. Um, and we take classes on methodology. Right. I mean, and it's just very basic. How are you writing the question? Who was the target of the, the, the question? What other questions are being asked and what are not being? And it was so obvious that this poll is flawed, yet even trying to raise that as a point of criticism, not even getting into the, the weeds became, or something right. more complicated. Right. It's like, we don't even want to talk about that. We don't even, really, so, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll just say this, as a son of Washington, as the song goes, um, you know, I, I grew up in a family that has had season tickets forever. My father had them when the team played at Griffith Stadium. You know, he grew up in Leedroy Park, right over the wall from Griffith Stadium. Um, uh, you don't know Kevin's story with the name and his father? No. You please, please. I know you've told it many <laughs> times, but you gotta tell the so, story. No, this is too good. This so too good. in the in in the early nineteen sixties, when the new the new stadium, DC Stadium, was being built, um, and the team was still refusing to uh, allow any black players on the team, my father and his friends started boycotting the games, and they went to watch the Baltimore Colts play instead, which had a number of black players. Um, obviously, Bobby Mitchell comes here. Um, the team integrates. They play. Uh, and in about 1965, I think, uh, my father became very, very disturbed about one of the great traditions of the team, and that was to have the great Redskins band before each game play the song Dixie which encouraged people in the stands to fly the Confederate flag, and from time to time, fisticuffs would break out between black and white fans. So my father wrote a letter to the then acting president, Edward Bennett Williams, and said, uh, Mr. Williams, with all due respect, uh, this song is offensive to a number of your season ticket holders like me, and we would like to ask that you respect our wishes and our dignity and uh, cease the playing of this, this song and stop treating the Negro ticket buyer um, uh, uh, with disrespect. And to Edward, Billions, Edward Bennett Williams' credit, um, he was running the team then because by then uh, George Preston Marshall was kind of incapacitated by age and illness. Um, he wrote my father back and said, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'll see that, it's, I'll see that this is taken care of. And they haven't played the song Dixie Sin. But now, so instead of so, his fight for D to D.C., instead of... Um, well, Dick well, they stopped playing. They used to say play the, the entire song Right, right. Dixie. Now it's just the touchdown... Right. This wasn't even about the fight song. This was... Right, 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 right. This was the Confederate National Anthem. Right, right. That's right, that's right. And they stopped. Right, that's right, 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 right. Right. So the point being that they can change and they have changed and they can be sensitive. But... I. And the world and the world didn't end. But I, I must say that as someone who grew up and lived and died each week with the success or failures of this team, I no longer do. I no longer do. I have lost I have lost so much of my fanaticism for this team over the stance that they, they've taken on, on this issue. I mean I mean when you think about when I heard Dan Snyder say never and put that in caps. Put it in your caps. He sounded like George Wallace standing yeah. in the door of the of the school. Segregation forever. Segregation forever. I mean, that's exactly what it sounded like. So how can I cozy up with that now? I really can't. I mean, I I don't I don't buy tickets to go to games anymore. Yeah. I I. It's it's troubling. God, let me tell you how how like. Look, my, my son is, uh, for better or worse, and we could talk about the morality of this, is an NFL fanatic, and he loves to play and all the rest of it. Um, he has heard me, you know, he's eight years old, he's heard me talk about this name for some time, 
and he's decided that this is so upsetting to say this. He's decided that the only moral choice is to be a Cowboys fan. And so he he just had his See, that's the problem. They go too far. <laughs> He said, I have to be the enemy of this racist name. Enemy, but now the enemy, the, the front line right. enemy is of native folk. Of native folk. <laughs> I know. That part just galls me to no end. And he's got his Des Bryant jersey. He wears it to school. And people in this town, they're like, hey, what are you wearing that for? You know, because he, like, random people on the street. And that just makes him, like. And he's like, because I'm standing up against racism. <laughs> yeah, in a Cowboys jersey. So I'll just say, I'll just say, Lord, help our seeds. Maybe you don't know what a red skin is Cause if you did shit, you would handle your biz yeah. Alert the relatives, discipline the kids Tell them stop supporting racism in sports where they live now mm. Go ahead and scream for your team mm. they need it. Besides the goal of players is to make it undefeated through a season So belief in the common cause is critical So you collaborate And treaty make along political lines That are designed to be a brethren connection A force to be reckoned with in pursuit of perfection Engrave your weapons with the logo of selection Use the a reflection of your moral intersection. I miss what I want.